After the death of Army Specialist Vanessa Guillen, investigators believe that she was killed by a fellow soldier who took his own life after they are now looking into claims that she was sexually harassed before she went missing, although it's still unclear if sexual abuse played a role. This case is raising troubling questions about harassment and sexual assault in the military and has sparked a new hashtag, I am Vanessa Guillen, where others are now sharing their stories. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has this story. The disappearance and death of Army soldier Vanessa Guillen has sparked outrage across the country and calls for change in Congress. The 20-year-old soldier was last seen alive in April at one of the largest Army installations in the country, Fort Hood in Killeen, Texas. The loss of a talented soldier, the loss of a loving family member, and the loss of a friend with a bright future ahead of her. Army investigators located human remains last week buried near a river about 20 miles from the base. The Army confirming this week the remains are indeed Vanessa's. That confirmation announced on the same day suspect Cecily Aguilar appeared in court, charged with helping to dispose of Vanessa's body. The criminal complaint says Aguilar allegedly told the FBI she and her boyfriend, Army Specialist Aaron Robinson, went back to where they disposed of Vanessa's remains days later to break them down more. Aguilar then leading investigators to Robinson. When they confronted him, Robinson shot and killed himself. Guillen's family says Vanessa told them she was being sexually harassed by a soldier before her disappearance, but didn't report it. It's not clear if Robinson is that soldier. The Army says they're still investigating those claims, but say they have found no evidence that Guillen was sexually harassed. How this happened at work, at the base, with thousands of people there, I, 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 um, I think this will haunt everyone forever. Guillen's family says the army didn't take Vanessa's disappearance seriously. They had two months and clearly they're not capable of anything because they didn't get answers. They had two months, two months, and that's a disgrace. What I was able to share was tempered by my responsibility to protect the integrity of the investigation so that we could A, re find Vanessa, B, prosecute those responsible for this travesty, and in the end, be in a position to punish them. And I don't, I just wish I could have done a better job balancing those two needs. A prominent Latino civil rights organization, the League of United Latin American Citizens, known as LULAC, is now urging Latinos not to join the military until they have answers as to how this could have happened to Vanessa. Why do you think it took so long for the army, for the military to come forward and say, yeah, this is suspicious, there is some foul play here? You know, when, when we saw that occur, and, and it was really almost two months later when they finally said that there was foul play that was involved, you know, that really made us wonder, Stephanie, if the proper protocols were followed. And I know that the family and, and Natalie, who represents the family, you know, alleged that there was a breach in protocol and that this case was not properly investigated. Army investigators are trying to figure out what the exact relationship was between Vanessa and Robinson. But for years, the military says it has worked to combat sexual harassment and assault across the services. A Pentagon survey released last year shows the number of sexual assaults increased in 2018 to 20,500, almost the same levels as five years ago, a result that led Pentagon officials to review and make changes to sexual assault prevention efforts. The survey shows female service members between the ages of 17 and 24 are at the greatest risk for sexual assault from their peers. The Pentagon also reporting in 2019 more than a thousand formal sexual harassment complaints, a 10% increase from the previous year. Do you think the military is failing to protect not only Latina women, but women in general? Absolutely. You know, we know that women experience a significant number of harassment, of sexual assault, of rape in the military. We also know that men are targeted, uh, but over disproportionately, it is women who unfortunately are experiencing this. And, you know, I, I, I want to recognize that they are trying to take steps with the SHARP program and, 
And, and what I do see is a failure in preventative measures, right? These are more reactive programs. SHARP, that's the Army's Sexual Harassment Assault Response and Prevention Program, where soldiers are educated on the issues surrounding sexual violence, and those who experience incidents of sexual assault or harassment can report it to a designated victim's advocate. We want to make sure that there's an assessment of the SHARP program, which is set up to investigate harassment and assault and, and do that, that work. But we want to see more aggressive measures to make sure that the military is taking those steps to protect our community. And Vanessa's case isn't the first high profile incident where sexual harassment or assault has been alleged. Senator Martha McSally, a Republican of Arizona and the first woman in the Air Force to fly in combat, told a Senate hearing room last year she had been raped by a superior officer. I am also a military sexual assault survivor. But unlike so many brave survivors, I didn't report being sexually assaulted. I blame myself. I was ashamed and confused. I thought I was strong, but felt powerless. The perpetrators abused their position of power in profound ways. And in one case, I was preyed upon and then raped by a superior officer. In January, Army Colonel Catherine Spletstoser filed a federal lawsuit alleging that the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff sexually assaulted her multiple times when they worked at U.S. Strategic Command in 2017. Spletstoser's allegation had taken center stage at Air Force General John Hyten's confirmation hearings on Capitol Hill last year. The hearing was delayed pending an investigation which concluded the allegations to be unsubstantiated. Senator McSally even calling her a liar. We spoke with Spletstoser then. And clearly in that room, General Hyten has some support. What message do you think that sends to sexual assault victims? Um, it says that uh, if you're a senior general officer who is a popular guy, you will get away with felony sexual assault. Um, that if you are a victim who also has a very distinguished record and no record of lying under any circumstance that you won't be believed. Um, that despite the fact that there was no credible evidence that I was lying, because I wasn't, it basically tells sexual assault survivors that don't bother to report you won't be taken seriously and will give your attacker a promotion. Hyten was confirmed and continues to deny the allegations. We spoke with Air Force prosecutor and retired Colonel Don Christensen, who now heads up the nonprofit Protect Our Defenders. He says in the military, the chain of command determines the process when a service member comes forward reporting sexual assault or harassment. In the military the prosecution decisions are made by commanders, not prosecutors. So in the civilian world, if someone was sexually assaulted, they would go to police and then they would eventually have that case reviewed by a prosecutor. In the military, that decision is vested entirely in a commander who often knows the offender. Uh, and it's a result, a result of that, there's a lack of faith in the process. The Army has tried to curb instances of sexual assault and harassment by using tools like the buddy system. The initial thought behind it was to pair each service member with an assigned troop to build camaraderie and make sure your comrade is doing the right thing. But in recent years, it's also been used informally on military installations as a way to prevent young women from being assaulted on base camps. A female walking by herself or a male walking by himself, those are usually the high target soldiers, so we try to enforce the battle buddy system. In our nation's capital, calls are growing louder for Congress to act. Representative Tulsi Gabbard, who also serves as a major in the Army National Guard, has called for an independent investigation into what happened to Vanessa. In a statement released Tuesday, Gabbard wrote, Vanessa's family has suffered throughout her disappearance with no real answers or transparency about what happened to Vanessa and why. While we are too late to save Vanessa's life, we must honor her life by getting to the truth and working to prevent this from happening to others. Vanessa's family asking for the same and also pushing legislation to protect other servicemen and women. I want that bill to be passed because at the end of the day, we're all humans. At the end of the day, we all deserve to be respected, and especially the ones that put their life at risk every day. 
Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.